Hi, this is Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander Worf from Next Generation and Deep Space Nine, and you're listening to Trek FM. T. L. Gray, hot. Special Trek.fm Earl Grey event announcement for Star Trek Las Vegas. Listeners, you know Bridgemates from Earl Grey episodes 82, 109, and 141, as well as To the Journey 117 and Standard Orbit 102. There is even the original trivia panel show Encounter at All Good Things from Earl Grey 137. So Earl Grey is proud to announce a live presentation of Super Bridgemates at the Star Trek Las Vegas 50th Anniversary Convention on Friday, August 5th from 12.30 to 1.15 p.m. It will be held at the Roddenberry Stage at Quark's Bar at the Rio. Your favorite team here at Earl Grey of Free Enterprise will attempt to escape defeat, again, against two rival Bridgemate teams, Team Lizard Babies, Charlene Schmidt and Tristan Riddell, and the Council of Mistresses, Andy Vanderkolk and Jera Hodge. When it comes to celebrating the 50th anniversary of Star Trek, regular Bridgemates simply won't do. And that's why this game show will be Super Bridgemates, a fun-filled comedic game show involving fans, cosplayers, and audience members. Not only will the teams compete in hilarious trivia, but those in the audience will participate by acting out selected scenes from our favorite Star Trek moments, and cosplayers will help create puzzles for the teams to solve. It's all about the love of Trek. So we hope all the listeners who will be coming to Star Trek Las Vegas will join us, Earl Grey, and all your favorite co-hosts and fellow listeners for Super Bridgemates at Star Trek Las Vegas at the Roddenberry Stage. It's time for another serving of Earl Grey, our dedicated TNG show. I'm Darren Moser, sitting in the center chair of the runabout this week. I'm joined by Warp Field Specialist Philip Gilfus. Philip, how was the Warp Propulsion Symposium? Oh, it was good. You know, you actually got to uh, put your hand inside of the stuff. But it's because it was like a haunted house thing that they actually have. Um, so it, it turned out it was just spaghetti noodles. But still, like when they said it was warp plasma, you kind of you thought it was. So it was, you know, something I, I may have been actually in the kids section now that I think about it. But, it, you know, whatever. It was it was fun. Though. Oh, well, it sounds very, very informative. Uh, and I'm also joined by Dr. Daniel Prue. Daniel, how was your paper on interspecies mating relationships received at the workshop? You know, I got to say, it was gangbusters, man. I mean, I, standing ovation, really. Uh, uh, I, I was going to pack a bunch of puns in there, but I, I decided against it. Oh, uh, yeah, it went really well, is what I'll say. Well, I, unfortunately, the uh, temporal mechanics, uh, you know, fun-a-thon is running out of special fun words you know it really was it was kind of boring because the the instructor he he just started talking and talking in one long unbroken sentence you know i have to say like darren i've never YouTube seen this comment look more more like like everything pops here like it's like it's sort of like it stands out more than I've noticed before in other runabouts i don't know what it is around here it's really clear yeah yeah i, I know it's what real- you mean <laughs> And it's also very roomy, too. A lot of space. I feel like we could just kind of do some jumping jacks in here or, or something. You know, I, I, could you guys imagine traveling to this conference in, like, a Type 6 shuttlecraft? It'd be so cramped. Oh, my gosh. We'd drive each other. It's insane. Well, today is a fun day for Earl Grey. This is our 150th episode, guys. Big 150. Huzzah! So we're going to do another... Uh, we're gonna do another role play with uh, a dozen members of Trek FM. Actually, no, sorry, that's that's not quite. We're gonna save that for the big double digits. But, but no, we thought on our 150th episode we would do a commentary of TNG's 150th episode. So it's Sub Rosa, guys. Timescape. Oh. 
No, uh, sorry, yeah, that's yeah. where it fell. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. No, we, I mean, it's in the Trek FM bylaws. <laughs> we were contractually obligated to. <laughs> no, no, we're talking about Timescape, which is season six, episode 25. This episode was directed by Adam Nimoy, son of Leonard Nimoy, and it's basically another time travel episode, but with twists, of course. And we get some great use of the runabout you know which was borrowed from their sister show a little a little show you might have heard of called deep space nine not heard of it and this is a, a really fun episode I, okay i know it's it's on on a different night philip it's okay just just tune your station it's uh it's no it's, we all love ds9 but as i was saying timescape it, you know it's it's got time in the title so you know you're in for a good time but yet it's not two picards which we know we all hate so uh, hopefully it'll live up to the the type of time travel work we've experienced before. So without further ado, cue up your amazing, immaculate Blu-ray of crystal clear HD goodness or your DVD that you've bought for the eighth time because they changed this, the packaging or Netflix because it's, you know, seven, ten dollars a month or all access if they have everything on it which i think they do but i haven't subscribed yet so cue up your episode remember that's season six episode 25 timescape and start your episode in three two one engage oh man was he holding a horgon is that why he has these claw marks on his head see this is i think the dangers of spot i don't think we get enough about that um (laughs) <laughs> I mean, he did turn into a vicious, you know, reptile. Well, well, he, well, that was when he was a he, right before True. he was a she, and then it, you know things kind of. No, I, I know people are. Does anyone gonna... want to see Parisi Squares? Yeah, I, I think can can we somehow get a team together during Star Trek Las Vegas? Oh, that would be fun. And then we'll try and figure out how to play it, or is it like Calvin Ball? Uh, probably like Calvin Ball. All right, so hey, Calvin Ball is awesome. When are we going to do our spot character profile? I think there's people who are waiting for us to do that. Right after we talk about Severosa. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't stun Data's cat. I mean, he even specifically talks also, about. Also, anyone episodes. want to mention the fact that there's just a phaser lying around in sick bay, unsecured. And- and there has to be regulations against tossing phasers <laughs> about. Um, well, this is Riker, okay. the same guy who sort of like sits his butt against the tactical console, so he's not really known for <laughs> playing it safe here. Oh, the Romulans, guys. I didn't know it was going to be a Romulan episode. Uh, I thought we were getting time travel. Yeah. Well, no, this is so good. Well, Daniel will probably get rid of it. You, you know, we know how he feels about Romulan episodes being essential. <sighs> Oh, stop. It. You know, stop Riker it. thought for a moment. He's like, if I just hold on this for 13 hours, it becomes a card's problem and I don't have to deal with it. <laughs> There's that runabout. Hey, there it is. Hey. The runabout. Oh, wow. That's, that's, man, that's what, so beautiful. that's what they're meant to look like. I don't know how it's. I almost cool. want to rewind it unless it, except for it throws off the sink of our commentary. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of detail, is all I'm, is all I'm saying. Now, I guess. Canonically, didn't um, the Enterprise drop off the runabouts to Deep Space Nine? Yes, I believe they did. Yep. Mm-hmm. Look at that roomy back cabin. So they, except for this one, they kept. <laughs> of course, it's the infamous. Uh... See, it's see, they ordered twenty runabouts, and they kept night. They kept one of them, and they. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, mean, I wonder. We should have gotten Marina to do her uh, imitation here last time we had her on. Oh, Dr. Mazan. Always picking up the ladies. Also, why? Why? I mean, why? Is there any actual reason that in the middle of this conference table on this runabout, they would just have a bowl of fresh fruit? I don't like I mean, I get that you can replicate it, but why would you? Why would you even bother? Why would you replicate it and not eat it right away? You mean? Yeah, like, why would you just, like, for decoration? Like, you're, it's on a spaceship. You don't need to, like... It's not even an actual spaceship. It's, like, a tiny spaceship that's only used to, to go between places. You know what I mean? It's not like your home on the Enterprise. All shuttles are big ships. Or all ships are big shuttles. <laughs> that's right. That's right. 
Yeah, that, that's true. Like you would, you would never have. That's an interesting thing. Like you don't even need to have food around in the 24th century. Like you don't need like, um, you know, bread just sitting on the counter anymore. You just go to the replicator. Think of all that kitchen space you're saving. I loved all the, all the different like <laughs> the kitchen space. I loved all the terms they use, like symposium and workshop and conference, and it's just it's like it's so pretentious almost. <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, maybe this is the uh, the version. This is you know, this, to this be fair, Starfleet con they were going to. There it is, <laughs> unbroken sense. To be fair, though, they are actually all eating right now. So maybe, maybe they're just feasting on that fruit. They're having now. dinner. Wait, it's, no, it's more like a snack time. I think it's it's right before they do their nap time. Um. It could, yeah, it could be lunch, like a light lunch. Yeah, I think this is sort of, and this is the penultimate episode of uh, season six here. So we're sort of, you know, near the end here of, of our journey. It's nice, though. Oh, oh there wait, it is. Guys, my, my Netflix, I mean, it, it's messing up, guys. I think I'm going to be behind you. No, I, I, I think Darren froze. It's okay. We can oh, poke him. Okay. Wait, I think everything froze. Interesting. Oh, Data's not eating, which is not not unexpected, but you know that's that's always an interesting thing for actors to play standing still. So now throughout this entire episode, I'm gonna like stare at everyone who's supposed to be standing still to see if they're breathing. See, sometimes I I feel like sometimes I can tell if it's freeze framed or if it's just them trying to be really super still, and sometimes I can't. I know there's sometimes you can see like a tiny bit of movement, but it's they 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 do a pretty good job of holding still. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering oh, if this was sort of like, uh, since it's sort of near the end, you know, both um, Marina and Patrick got to do their sort of imitation voices. Like, was that in the script? That they're like, hey, I got a thing. Can I do a thing? I got a voice I've been sitting on here. And then Brent's like, I've got a voice. And they're like, Brent, we know you do. <laughs> Let it go. Brent, you cannot play the runabout. <laughs> Sorry, we already have we already have the set and everything, so... Uh, you know, it, you you were just talking about Philip about how it's season six here. And we're heading towards kind of the end here, but it's like I like I like however how comfortable everybody is and how it's just. I mean, we're way past the point of just settling in, but it's just nice. Like you watch this episode, and it's just like you feel it feels like home. I don't know. It's just like this is one of those episodes that's really kind of comforting to me, like uh, that I always enjoy going back to. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of interesting because, you know, Riker's in command, obviously, because John Luke was away um, at his con. Um, and so, it, but, but it's sort of like, you know, Riker's fine being in command. You know, he can, he can do that. Not a big deal. Mm-hmm. But I do sort of like, this is sort of the, uh, the random yeah, character generator. Like, it's not quite as bad as Rascals, but it's sort of like, I don't know, Picard and I don't know. Jordy and I don't even need the third one. <laughs> Jordy. Troy, maybe? Yeah, let's do Troy. There you go. Well, I also like how in this episode, she's, you know, I'm glad this is season six and she's got her uniform, she's got her rank, you know, it it, it works way better than if she was wearing <sighs> like the blue dress or something. Gosh, could it be more beautiful? I mean, like, if only I could see like a wormhole in HD, that would probably make it green, huh? <laughs> Uh, I was just going to say you can, but I don't think you can. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. So this, this is a weird interior, because it sort of looks like a different part of Though it does have that runabout door. This does seem like a lot of wasted space for a very small craft, doesn't it? Like, just like a well, big, empty big, room. big, like, conference room in the back. I mean, you look at the runabout, and the back's got, like, a whole bunch of windows. Yeah, and there's the ball, the ball yeah, pen they I don't guess. actually show that's in the back there, too. I mean, look at the space. I mean, you got the bunks right there in the in the wall Mm -hmm. but it's a huge space though this place is yeah and i feel like this place is bigger this space is bigger than most defiant quarters (laughs) (laughs) that's what i'm saying and like think of um the delta flyer right which i i don't know so forgive me i don't know the the comparative specs between the delta flyer and the runabout but i assume they're kind of the same similar i think the shuttle the 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 delta flyer is like half the size of a runabout is it is it really that much smaller? No, oh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Interesting because because again, you know, we're talking about this in this episode. We do get to see a lot of the runabouts that we don't normally get to see, 
But it, it seems like a shame for Deep Space Nine to never, ever show it when, you know, the, they used the, the runabouts so much, mm-hmm. you know? Well, usually it's for them to crash or explode or something like that. Oh, and she's doing her little right, uh, right. technique of, of tapping her uh, neck there that, that she taught to Barkley in a realm of fear. Yep. Yeah, the plexing. Or actually, I guess that was actually his first episode. Oh, also. Oh no, you're right, Daniel. I'm looking at it, and they're about the same length. It's just the think of the runabout as more of a like box car. Like it's very boxy inside, so there's a lot of internal volume. Yeah, that's fine. I, but I'm just saying, like we see all, well, presumably most or all of the Delta Flyer, and it's it's cramped. Like it has that back room, but it's still smallish, and you, and like it's, everything's near each other. This one is just like a big empty room for no reason. Now I do like that this is. I mean, I don't know, you introduced it as a time travel episode. It's not really, but it kind of is, but it's sort of a, a change on the nuance of the of the concept there. We're not really going back. Yeah. Or, well, I guess we are, but. But I guess, you know, like, um, like some season two episodes we won't name, you're just going back or forward a couple minutes or hours versus, you know, years, and decades and centuries. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. We're now looking at the uh, are the differences between the two ships here. Interesting. Interesting. Somehow I remember in this episode, like, Data saying, Captain, may I see you? And then he's like, where were you? I called you like three hours ago. <laughs> but that doesn't actually happen. Now, that that is a different looking cockpit. And then I'm usually seeing for a runabout. No, that's the that's the cockpit. That's the normal one. I'm pretty sure. So I wonder. I mean, I know they were right next to each other on the lot. Does 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 this mean that they're over on the Deep Space Nine uh, studio, or did they have to move point? to the different uh, to back to their area to shoot all the back room? <laughs> so they have to <laughs> yeah, like literally yeah, walk that's across. What that's what I'm assuming. I was just going to say, I wonder if this runabout went to Deep Space Nine, but we know that's not the case because Deep Space Nine has already started mm-hmm. at this point. Yeah, my guess is they must have built it over on the DC Nine set because in Memory Alpha they said they, you know, they used the budget from their show to build the back area, but they just ended up never using that in Deep Space Nine. Yeah, you're welcome, guys. Ah, uh, the Frangi came by and siphoned all their gas. <laughs> so here's my question, guys: Captain Picard gets hurt or injured, and I, this may actually be talked about here i can't remember but we have three lieutenant commanders right behind him who's going to take command- <laughs> <laughs> who's the first officer here 47 yeah. days did you guys catch that <laughs> ha, 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 ha. now i assume yeah, it's just data. i assume data yeah section command. and then geordie and yeah. then counselor but- <gasps> oh guys that's why the fruit was there the whole time I love that, like, the length of this scene, it's all just to establish that he's smelling something bad. It's very subtle, <laughs> but it's good. Also, to me, this is an odd layout. Oh, guys, I saw it. I already looked. He had it. You're supposed to look at his hand before he... Yeah. Oh, did he? No, I didn't think so, right? Yeah. No, he reaches his hand and you see it normal. Yeah, but that's a cutaway. And cut it comes away. up yeah. and you it's had to look like... about five seconds beforehand and... Yeah, that could have been Tracy Coco's hand for all we know. Now I'm wondering is why did they come in? Like he didn't call them; he just cried out. He didn't say, "Computer, tell them to come to me." That's I true. I think he was yelling like a captain. But then again, you know, we gotta we gotta move the plot along. So <laughs> we haven't even got to the Romulan part yet. I'm telling you, this isn't a Romulan episode. This is a time travel uh-huh. episode. <laughs> oh, yeah, gross. It's, uh, the fruit has turned to paste. Data, be glad you don't have a sense of smell. <laughs> the Picard's hand is now. So, like, does that mean, like, as they intersect the bubble, the smell is, like, compressing <laughs> from 50 times the smell down to normal? That'd be pretty intense. Also, they walk question. around way too willy nilly to be like, are, are we going to accidentally, like, when they start to move away from it later, and you look back, and they're just the sitting at the exist. table. It's like, why are you sitting at the table? Like, I would be nowhere near that table. I also feel like it's an interesting construction of the cabin here, because you have the bunks of the 
of the runabout. Right. But on the other side, it's like one big area sofa. So like like you could have fifty people sitting on that sofa <laughs> as like some guy's sleeping. It's a college dorm room, basically. As they're all staring at runabout. Out. For movie night. Yeah, yeah except there's movie. no uh, plastic crates being used as chairs. Also, like, I they move around a lot in this runabout. I mean, it kind of really shows how in every shot of DS9, it's literally just the front. Yeah, they're just always sitting. That's why it always, yeah. On, we're now, we're back. Phenomenon, phenomenon, phenomenon. <laughs> you know, I feel like there should be like a either a drinking game or a count of how many times in Star Trek you get a I think you'd better come look at this. Cause the TV show, if they just said everything over the comm, <laughs> then we wouldn't see anything. Is is Troy's uniform a one piece? Uh, probably all the women. I believe so. The women. They, the women usually have the jumpsuit. I didn't. Yeah. I never noticed that. I just when when Picard got up and walked away, he did his normal Picard maneuver, and you know you could see Data is obviously a two piece, but sh- when she walked uh, away, guys, just, they're playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> That's where the Pokemon are going to be showing <laughs> <Nice>. up. <laughs> they would be funny if they stopped the runabout because they you know they saw a Charmander <laughs> or something. <laughs> T- time is hard. <laughs> <laughs> that may be the episode <laughs> title word there. Time is hard. <laughs> hey, but at least it gets them outside, you know. That's right. That's exactly right. What a beautiful shot. Oh man, that's a shot worth getting. <laughs> <laughs> a shot worth getting. Oh, we love to rub a rub salt <laughs> in that wound for sure. Uh but yeah, I do love this. is just a great story. I mean, I knew I shouldn't have left Riker in charge. Yeah. He totally stole my ship. But to me, this is a great, great sci-fi story because you have a little mystery, then you have the whole Warbird and the Enterprise, and everything looks cool and awesome. And this is about to look really cool here in a second. Here, this whole shot. Of the uh, the Enterprise and the Warbird, the energy beam, the weapons fire, all frozen in time. Oh, it's such a great shot. Yeah, I mean, clearly it's sort of like I like how space is moving, <laughs> clearly, but they are it's only a model. <laughs> <laughs> and again, okay, that's the bubble. Let's get as absolutely close to it as possible with the runabout. But look how pretty it is. Mm-hmm. Both those ships, the Enterprise and the uh, the Warbird. Now I wonder how much the size differential is going to be like. Does it look like the Warbird is the actual size it should be in comparison to the Enterprise? Because the Warbird is I, I don't think it huge. ever does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think it ever does, but... Wait a minute, we're just looking at a backdrop. These are the... Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, these are the two best... My... my... I also like how you're saying, Philip, how good this episode is. Like, yeah, like right now they're just having conjecture because they they don't know what's happened. We don't know what's happened. I like how as the episode progresses, we learn as they learn. It's not like we know what's going on and they just have to figure it out. Though it does remind me of evolution where this sort of like we come back to the ship and it's like uh, everything's crazy. Picard's just like, I'm never leaving again. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, guy. Way to state the obvious, Captain Picard. Obviously, we need to find a way to stay unfrozen. Would you like to build a snowman? Well, normally all he has to do is say something like that, what? and the officers find a way to make it happen. Uh, could they be referencing uh, Time Zero, Daniel? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, we already know Data has a really good phase discriminator. That's all that episode was about. <laughs> That's right. Data does not discriminate. <laughs> And apparently, no one remembered the emergency armbands, which we totally could have used instead of sacrificing data. I just retconned. Uh, like, the... Probably just have armbands like there in the runabout. But that runabout's so big, they probably have everything in every single console there that you can think of. Uh, but only three armbands uh, for a crew of four? Mm-hmm. That's very poor packing. To be fair, have you ever like needed something really bad and you open the glove compartment and you're like, oh my god, there it is. <laughs> like, uh, you know. 
So it's definitely possible that that. I mean, look here. at the back Ooh. area. There's literally storage compartments for days. <laughs> A little damage enterprise. So it says, okay, hang on. I'm just watching. We're watching this obviously in HD here. But the um, registry yeah. number of the runabout was not 1701. No, it's the uh, it's the Rio Grande's registry. Well, no, I think all runabouts have their own, even regardless of if it's assigned to a starship. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that how yeah, it like works? They're basically mini starships, I, I suppose. I don't know how you want to argue it, but yeah. Uh, bigger shuttles, some would say, but yeah. It's kind of in the <laughs> middle there. But then, yeah, I would ask, what's the actual name of this runabout that they're on? Since it doesn't have to go by the DS9 convention of being a river of some sort. So wait, did they basically just make TAS life belts <laughs> on their arms? I think because that's basically what they did, except for they're not showing the glow every second. Right. Well, you could, it's yeah, except it, instead of you know space, it's time. I yeah, guess, and, right? and there's very little pink and purple on the screen right now. So, <laughs> oh, see, this yeah, is cool. these freeze shots are so good, and they're so eerie because everyone's frozen. Yeah, they are. I mean, Riker doesn't have his leg up on something. Something must be wrong. I like that if they like walk away and then Picard comes back, puts Riker's legs up, then walks away. Hang on, the guy in the back looks like he's smiling. <laughs> it's like, well, Brent just. I also like you. how it was very Later. clever to have the freeze be at a moment where the red alert al- alert was on, <laughs> not off. Meaning like yeah. 50 chance. Well, no, no, but I mean, it could have been pulsing, you know, because it only shows up every couple of seconds, mm-hmm. so we happen to hit that moment, but it makes it, again, that much more eerie to have all the lights on, but not flashing. Oh, I like it. Is, it, is this a temporal prime directive here? They always think of like I like how they they say none of the machines work, but yet they're constantly touching the panels as if it's doing something. <laughs> and there's Tracy like right in the now. Background. Picard's like, oh yeah, let me. Uh, oh wait, never mind. Guys, uh, that's Tracy in the back in the background there, right behind Picard. If he moves, you'll see her. He's breathing. So okay, so here, how do you feel about this? Um, these guys, you know, everybody they have the armband on, they have the big tricorder on their hip. They on the other hip, they got the mm-hmm. phaser. For the new show, do you want to see more of a, like a utilitarian uh, design for the costumes, like on Enterprise, or do you want to see like them like have these ridiculous c- gadgets all over their body, like they do right now? I I kind of like you know like in TOS when they needed the phasers, like they ad- added the belts, you know they just snapped yeah. the belts on. Like I I could see that, or maybe like a sla- a sash, and it's got like their communicator, their rank, their phaser. You know, which is thinner and more advanced. Well, like it would be interesting if they actually had. Okay, now let's climb up to the. They actually had away team uniforms, like in the TOS movies, kind of. Sort of what they. Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay. God. No, yeah, that would be cool. I do like how they encounter sort of like what would really happen if you freeze time. Like, oh, there's people in the Jeffries tube. Well. (laughs) Well, and I love how again they make it clear apparently that. The Jeffrey Tube are the only way to get around if the uh, elevators are down. <laughs> also, Darren, to your point about the red light, um, here we are now on another deck. So the the, the red alert must be synchronized, <laughs> or presumably is synchronized across the entire ship. I think it is. At, <laughs> on the bridge, and now we're on a different deck. It's still on, so... it's you know. Well, it's got the... It's... Uh, what's it? time code oh. it's synced across the episode <laughs> so by the way all these actors are great I, it, they are all every time they do this they do really good job i mean i know it's got to be hard <laughs> it's lita alexander I mean, this, she kind of breaks character a little here uh we had the ex- we have the exact same shot in um oh shoot what's the next phase the exact same shot of a Romulan coming to life after the the main characters run uh-huh. past them. Oh, that's right. That's exi- never trust it, a frozen Romulan. <laughs> that is the no, lesson. You never I believe it comes from the old Greek. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't really learned Romulans until you've heard it in the original Greek. <laughs> never trust a frozen Romulan. Or is it transported? Gosh, war. What is war? <laughs> And he looks sleepy. Did he He take over for Miles? Where's Miles during all this? Well, he's on Deep Space Nine, Darren. Now, 
because from Mort's perspective, his hand just moved at like 80 times speed. <laughs> yeah, his that it should just be like broken. It should be break a pace his, at this point. <laughs> break his wrist. <laughs> you can you could consider this episode kind of a, a flash episode, right? They just learned about their powers. They're literally moving so fast <laughs> that everything else is standing still. Uh, yeah. So, so but, is he gonna like take off Worf's bandolier and like put it on backwards, and they're just gonna start pranking <laughs> everyone on the Enterprise? That's what I would do for sure. <laughs> Man, I love these. You know, these green walls in the transporter room. I know we don't talk about them a lot. Really like them a lot. Yeah, it's it's a really nice set. A little blue green. Yeah. I also like the little touch of the door being slightly open, like they had, it was just closing behind yep. them. Yep. Yep. I feel what also makes these frozen shots work so well is the camera's always moving. Mm-hmm. It's not a yeah. locked shot with the camera, and that just makes it creepier because they're moving and the camera's moving, and then the background people are not. I also love uh oh, and it probably masks. It probably helps mask any slight movements. Yeah, that those I mean, if you look really have. close in our beautiful HD, you do notice like the <laughs> tiny little vibrations of a person, but it's it's right. very minimal. And I do really like this. We get a, we get how like incredible data is, oh, like how yeah. imperceptible that he can pick. Aren't up Aren't you on glad these I was but... on this away mission, Captain? I sh- you <laughs> should be glad. <laughs> oh no, that thing's still exploding. It's just doing it really, yeah. really, really, really. I like slowly. how Picard so it, is like, "Well, how do we stop it, uh, sir? It's already happened." <laughs> yeah, yeah. To me, this is sort of like it threw me off. That I mean, it makes sense, I suppose, especially with physics and stuff. That what we see. Is not necessarily what's happening. So it's like, how can there be a warp core breach? I don't see it. Like, well, it's it's there though. Slow and steady wins the warp core race. Thank you. I think it would have been cool if they could have done the effect. I mean, it's obviously a still plate, but to make it actually, you could we could actually see it moving really slowly. I think that would have been a really cool shot. And then. And- I like. I kind of like that we don't do that though, just because it's so slow. Oh, that's true. Because otherwise, you'd still like if you stood there. It's long something enough, data you'd be able can see. Somebody move, but we can't. Yeah. Ooh, let's go aboard the Romulan ship. God, this is no time to be laughing, Picard. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have the time. Are you thinking that the warp core is farting? Is that what you think is so funny? He made smiley face. <laughs> This is one of those moments that it's just a standout moment. It is. Right? Like, this is one of those things you always remember, you know? I'm trying to remember what my joke was. Uh-huh. <laughs> Something about a monkey in a Ferengi mm-hmm. seat? Uh, uh. Wait, that's wrong. That's wrong. And then, like, Picard, pretend like, or Patrick, pretend like you're trapped in the, the turbo lift again. The ceiling's coming down at you. <laughs> <laughs> radishes, radishes. <laughs> Also, children everywhere, Picard. Children everywhere. I also <laughs> love how we're in main engineering and there's two people on duty. So that's always my favorite again. Well, you know how that works. Well, I mean, the Forge isn't there to keep him in line. He's actually doing his inspection right now. <laughs> it would have been cool if we saw Barkley in the background in the in that yeah. uh, scene. Yeah. Just for- so this is where Picard apo- or sorry, this is where Jordy apologizes for not fully protecting the captain, right? Right? Because he's the one who configured those armbands, he the, right? He got the temporal bends, apparently. Yeah. Uh, you were it's 99.9% kind of covered, is, right? Captain. I thought that'd be enough. It's, it's like, uh, you know, ivory soap with germs, we thought. <laughs> we can't say it's 100%. <laughs> they're like, I was like, we feel bad just making Jordy keep... Let's, uh, let's tag out. Okay, we're going to tag out. Ooh. So, do they are they wearing the armbands because the Enterprise is being destroyed and they're already in mourning? No, I like for this it. A little little continuity. We're we're referencing Troy's time in a uh, on the wrong. Yeah. Ship. No, it's it's very clever. The people who are on this runabout, like they each have something to do. It's they none of them are wasted, mm-hmm. which I really like about this episode. And, and then I like how once Picard is not beaming over, oh, he's like, oh, it's ten so minutes. Pretty. Awesome Look, it's shot, so, by the, I mean, such a cool shot. For an audio podcast, I know you love it when we keep saying that. But. <clears throat> yes. No, the shot of the frozen shot of the ships 
with the uh, quote unquote energy transfers happening and the, between and the them. fire. Oh, and, yeah, it's it looks yeah. so good. And I love that Troy is basically in command right now. Yeah. And this pretty much, you know, I don't know if it's exactly how we see it in other episodes, but it's pretty close. So, it, you know, we just saw a shot of one of the Romulan consoles and a good, tw- there it is, 20% of that console is just their, their logo, you know, emblem, their logo. The branding and it's like, is no, really what? strong and in you, the Romulan Star Empire. You okay? complain about Elkar's layout. Okay. <laughs> like, look at that what panel that right there. Do? That's like thirty percent of that panel is the logo. If you hit that button, does it just call back to the Romulan Empire? I don't. What does it uh, do? It's What's the, the point? Button, of it says "Hail Praetor." <laughs> Hail Praetor. <laughs> Hail Hydra. Okay, now. Yeah, it's like it's that's and look, there's Label. the logo again. It's freaking everywhere. <laughs> yeah, what kind of a ship am I on? Oh wait, I remember now. <laughs> Just in case Dude. you didn't know what ship you were on. No. Troy <laughs> just told Data that what he said was impossible. Now I'm going to notice... Those are fighting words. I'm going to look at these Romulan uniforms to see if I can notice any subtle differences. Because I know last time you could see like little rank or where they just gave everyone... Oh. Now, what... J- Jordy, I don't think that's a good idea. Don't <laughs> open the... Okay, you just opened their warp core. I mean, <laughs> uh, I, I really don't think that's a good idea. There was no handle for a it. reason, the forge. <laughs> I don't know. Is this the episode that we learn about it? Or I'm sure we probably knew before, but this is where we learn that uh, that their ships are powered by artificial I think this is the one we learn it. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So basically, fake black holes uh, kind of power their yeah. ships, which is crazy cool. Yeah. Like, that is amazing. I like how it's different. It's not just, oh, we use it matter antimatter like everyone else. Right. And, like, by the way, opening a container that had an artificial singularity in it would probably kill everybody there. Yeah, that there, but really doesn't seem like a good idea. I mean, there was... <laughs> presumably. If you want to put a right. logo warning sticker on that, that's where you want to put it. Oh, my gosh. Everyone's moving. I'm so not used to this. They're not noticing us. Look at those, look at those stools. <laughs> if you get the wide shot again, they got the funky, weird, bent chicken legs. Like, shouldn't they notice that? Yeah, they, they kind of seem really occupied. It's that like, excuse me. There's not <laughs> Enterprise crew. Yeah, that's a question, though. Like, what would you do? Like, in an emergency situation, when you have something so dire, you know, the death is of everybody. Oh, no, the Enterprise! The Enterprise! The Enterprise! The Enterprise. Wait, wait, oh, wait, no, wait no, guys, no, it's no, cool. No, it's no, totally hey, we're cool. Fine. We're it's fine. totally fine. Oh, we're fine. We're fine. Yeah, we're fine. I also feel like that does sort of betray this at the special effect, because it just clearly looks like it's an explosion over the picture of the Enterprise. <laughs> like, you don't actually see anything breaking uh, apart or anything. Welcome to the What was your <laughs> Class G warp core breach? <laughs> I mean, some of the other ones, it's a very different. Uh, Data, that's not the view screen. You literally opened their warp core. <laughs> don't. <laughs> what, what did you think was going to happen? Don't look into the trap, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Troy is in command here on this ship. I think she should just Gosh, command a Romulan ship. She but, but she's being vague enough to not take the heat. They said something about a power <laughs> transfer, and then if it's not what it's about, she could say, well, I just thought I heard. <laughs> I'm not an engineer. And I will also, I will also say, this is about a, a fair of representation uh, uh, of rank color, as we ever get in <laughs> TNG. We got two, two, yeah. two, two yellows, a blue, and a red, so... Don't question the Matrix. Ah, uh, oh, that's why you don't question oh, the no. Matrix, Jordy. And first of all, why would Data not have noticed that? Data should have really realized instantly there's a new person here that wasn't here before. Look at it, and Troy Kate taking command. Oh, man, Troy is on point. She really is. She, saved, she saves everybody in this She's episode. She's like, uh, throw him in a Romulan ship. It's what happened to me. If I can deal with it, Jordy can. I think they should name the temporal <laughs> disturbance about uh, by her. Oh, uh, what would they call it? I don't know. Troy temporal right. escape psychosis. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, I wish we knew the name. Although, of the oh. didn't they say in the very beginning like we can only use the transport a couple of times because they're beaming all over the place? <laughs> 
Well, we know data, you know, from the, from future times. We know data can just jump look, from ship see, to ship in space. Look how freaking big this room is. Yeah. So that's the back because that's got all the vertical windows in sequence. Like, and if we if we see this other shot again, we can see that there is a, a beer koozie <laughs> um, right between the uh, the seats there. But I don't know if we're going to see that. Uh, you, you mean um ale or uh... yes, ales <laughs> for everyone. Wow, this is so sharp you can read the text on the L cars. <laughs> yeah. You really can. It's, <laughs> there's lots of numbers. And it's just a bunch of numbers. I don't know how anybody makes sense of that. I mean, right. data can. But yeah. I, I don't know how anybody see, else can read things, that. one of those things, Daniel, I thought you'd appreciate. You can actually see the computer code if you know it on top. It's actually happening. <laughs> that is not code. That is not code. Those are just a bunch of random numbers. That doesn't To the untrained eye, it might be a bunch of random numbers. <laughs> you don't know numbers. what kind of computer language, programming language, are using in the 24th century, Daniel. I, you're absolutely right, but I do know people oh, I are see, terrible there's at your, recognizing your beer. large numbers. <laughs> <Cozy, laughs> yeah. right there. Actually, oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, it up. Is it just like is it like an ice chest right there, already full? You just pull out a can. Well, yeah, you don't want to have to get up from the couch to go all the way over to the replicator when you could have it right there. <laughs> I mean, if you have fresh fruit on the table, you have beer already in the runabout. Koozie. Okay, look, they That's even right. have their logo right there on their chest. I mean. Gosh, the branding is strong well, in the Romulan Star Empire. Well, well hang on. That's, it's an that's imperial fair. state. So did the, so the Federation. So the Federation has their uh, emblem on their chest as well. That's okay. But it's it's double functional as a communications device and locator. To be fair, you could probably use that as a battering, <laughs> and, uh, and we're not sure. So. Or bargaining in a poker game. It has lots of uses. That's true. Look, and on their belt. Oh, they do have two. Oh, on belt. their belt. The and, so, yeah. so literally, <laughs> it's like right here at their, you know... No, if you combine the belt cheek, buckle yeah. and the chest symbol together, does it make a Romulan gun, maybe? Is that how they transport? <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe. And bubble wrap. Oh, or wait, is it maybe... Well, look at all those storage containers in the background. Look at all the storage. I, I mean, this is like the RV <laughs> of the 24th century. I think a runabout is an RV. I've never not thought that's what it was. Um, it's a recreational vehicle. <laughs> It kind of is, like in a lot of ways, it, you know, it's big and bulky and, and kind of this is roomy. This is also a great scene because this is where they're really starting to actually have the right answers mm-hmm. and put the pieces together. Now, I'm also wondering if you take off the uh, chest piece and belt piece, are there also like throwing stars like our mirror universe? Yeah, maybe for sure. We have found life because this is TNG. That's the we usually have. You know, one thing I'm, I'm noticing in this scene that I've never really appreciated before is the fact that you can't see any makeup on Data's uniform. You would think it would rub off after, like, you know, however long they shot for and stuff, but that's pretty impressive. Well, they have had six seasons to perfect the technique. Yeah, that's true. That's Computer true. and holographic program. <laughs> no, it was a life form. Oh. He just died. You witnessed his death. Wait, are you saying holograms aren't life, Darren? Because I have another series you should watch. Oh, Lord, yes. Oh, look at that beautiful shot. Uh, there's a sun over somewhere to the left, but yeah. Uh-oh, Picard making his uh, command decision here. They're doing a lot of watching Data work. Is Data really carrying this mission? Because <laughs> Well, now that we're back on a Starfleet vessel, it's back to Data. If we're on the wrong moon ship, it's Troy. Well, Troy's made more Again, command decisions than Picard has in this entire episode. I think Picard did a very strong giggle um, and some art. <laughs> so I don't know what else you want from him. Ten minutes only. Ten minutes only. Imagine if there was some way for Data to interface <laughs> directly with the computer instead of having to use That's fingers. the numbers. It's a code that only Data can read, and it's packed with information. Now, now if you eat... And do ten minutes, we get cramps, or I'm I'm not sure how this whole thing. Works. Yeah, see, this is very lucky that it actually works that way because it didn't actually sound like the tricorder was controlling it. It sounded like they yelled out a random frequency and something happened. How do they know what to make it do to reverse that procedure? Oh, they'll just remodulate the tricorder's delta band. Well, thanks for that answer, Data. I totally buy that now. Make it so. Oh, I wish I could read that runabout panel for a second. 
Where's Jordy during all this? Is he flying the ship or is he? S- oh wait, sorry, I totally forgot. He's frozen in time on the floor. Yeah, of the he's in time. that's what happens when you split the party. Yeah, they did not give Jordy <laughs> a lot to do. That he's in the episode. They're like, we're not going to send him on the first. Gosh, ah, uh, that shot, oh, man, that's so the great, pretty. That's the great. Okay, so we got Picard in position on the bridge. Troy shoot a Romulan. is ready to shoot first, ask questions later. That's an odd pad. We've got red mode, uh, also, red mode tricorder. Yeah, I also like how they have the whole pad sync to the tricorder. Like, that's really clever. That's some Mission Impossible level stuff. What? 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 <laughs> Even the warp core is going backwards. I think that's my favorite part is where data has to move when someone near a gun. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, here we go. Also, you don't usually see that much okay. battle damage on the Enterprise D. Like the way they have the. I've never seen anybody come from that oh, back yeah. corner. I didn't know you could go oh, around that. Oh, no. Thing don't there. touch data. Oh, it's Patricia he's, Tillman. He's positively charged. You're negatively charged. Um, I almost thought about it. Do, do, do. <laughs> all right, all right, Data, you're an android. No, don't do. Ah, oh. you know, you know, twenty gazillion c- calculations per second, Data. You totally could have said something sooner. Uh, yeah, that extra totally yeah. got some lines. So he's 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 a marked man now. Level three? Uh, don't those go up to level ten? Jeez, Data's yeah. being skimpy with the. Oh, bam! I'm a Romulan. I know how to run this console. <laughs> Do you really? I'm in charge Do now. Do you really? Oh, see, he was just he was just bending down to help Riker. Oh, the in our lives. I'm gonna say this. I don't we think I've ever noticed that the carpet paid. is red. Because it's red alert. Oh, there you go. It's command color. And I like how <laughs> Crusher's totally like, not like, Deanna, where the heck did you come from? <laughs> and look at that. Nothing but blue. Where did she come from? Where did she go? Where did she come from, Romulan Joe? Oh, stop, stop. Uh-oh. Gosh, we even told you, Data, there was another alien. You didn't look out. Oh, if only there was some... Guys, remember what we did on the Scotty mission? Yeah, let's do that. Is that Romulan frozen in time behind them? Because yeah. he's not moving. <laughs> he is. He is. <laughs> very so is there another now. bubble? <laughs> he, oh, he's, no, he's no, just he's there. I like how there's just a Romulan on the bridge, just there. He's just, he's just there. Aww. No, Jordy oh, was on that shuttle. Oh, wait, never mind. He wasn't. <laughs> but he was on that warbird, which is now gone. So Jordy's lost in time. <laughs> Sliders. <laughs> He was there doing the Geordi spinoff. So, okay, so my understanding for what happens, it retours space-time, so it's basically like it plays out what would have happened to that mission, meaning they do evacuate everyone, and Geordi's saved, and then the warbird disappears. So we he- see it happen in a moment, but all that plays out, we just don't see it. Because I'm like, because later on he talks about how that they've evacuated everyone, but I'm like, when? When did that happen? Yeah, no. Well, Darren, let me let me explain it to you in very simple terms. Uh, timey wimey, <laughs> oh, that's okay. all. That's, that's it, all. Yeah. Yes. So, after a swift interrogation, we'll bring them home. <laughs> now, the, now the silly coda. Ah, uh, yeah. I like this. I really do like this. The the whole thing with Riker doesn't like Spot, and it's fun. It's good character. Like we had stuff. to start with Spot. We have to end with Spot. <laughs> Yep. I was going to say, Data's like, spot sleeping. She's a cat. That's kind of what she does like 90% of the time. Also, let's, let's think of how this is literally working. Data has a kettle, which why do you need A? B, what is he heating it on in his quarters? That's it's a hot a plate. Hot plate. <laughs> yeah, for sure. This is I a mean, college Even dorm. though every time you ask for water from the replicator, it asks you to specify in centigrade how hot it is every time. Mm-hmm. You know, oh man, it, I don't want to, I don't really want to get too deep into it, but this is actually 
a really kind of smart way to use data to hey does a, a watch pot never boil that how, kind of how do we thing. perceive like, time cool. Yeah, how do we perceive time? That like it, it, it kind of really fits into the obviously the theme of the episode, and it makes sense. I, I think this is I also a clever love how we just it. saw data stuff. We saw the uh, three musketeers. We saw that head yeah. usually has like the Sherlock Holmes stuff on it. I also like how Riker's eyes roll exactly when he's like, "I'm using the adage a watch pot never boat oils," and he's like, "Really, really, data? Oh boy, this is it's what we're doing. Are you igniting the midnight petroleum?" <laughs> <laughs> he leaves and starts lighting petroleum. <laughs> and then Riker just drops some knowledge on him. It is interesting. It's a, that's a that's a clever uh, way to write it. But I feel like people can't turn off their yeah. internal chronometer. Like we can't just be like, but we, I, but I, we can now my zone sense out. Of time is completely. I think that's erased. the point. Well, like right here, like that eye look by. Data is the best because he's not he's emotional, like, guys. He doesn't have emotion. <laughs> no, no, of course not. Of course not. Oh, look at that beautiful nacelle. Man. There it goes. Both of them. And that oh, is the that was time that was timeless. Oh. No, wait, that was timescape. That's right. There's time's enemy. No, <laughs> time's enemy. So, guys, that was timescape. Hopefully, you enjoyed listening to us discuss this episode maybe you were watching along with us maybe you were just hearing us make fun pokemon go puns and talking a lot about freeze frames but uh i mean just like pokemon go just like say by the bell Sorry. i mean did the romulan go like time out at the very beginning <laughs> with the t and everybody froze uh but that's it's a, it's a really well done episode and you know, like we said, it's almost the end of season six. Any any comments you guys have uh, now that we're not trying to keep pace with the episode? No, preppy. <laughs> no, I'm good. That was it's fun. I like the episode. No, it's it's very good and and better than some of the other time type episodes. I mean, like Time Squared, <laughs> Tuba Cards, but uh, but definitely definitely well done. It's hard to do time travel episodes and to do them well, and I think this one was original enough. And unique enough to to have its place in. I feel like canon. I feel like the uh, the idea came from someone using a VCR. <laughs> what if I were to rewind? Yeah, it maybe, and then pause it. I would say it came from someone using their DVR, but that t- technology did not exist back then. You know, you're trying to skip past the commercials, and you're like <laughs> thirty seconds ahead of when the show started. You're like, and then you have to back up, but then you have to. Uh, well, mo- talking and talking about an episode in one unbroken, unedited sound clip is not the only thing we're talking about here on Trek FM this week. Here's a look at what you may have missed elsewhere on the network. Previously on Trek.FM, The Ready Room. The DNA of Star Trek fandom, and I've said it before, fandom existed, fandom enjoyed the show. But the main charge of fandom was to get the damn thing back. Warp 5. The Romulans had their ship in Season 4 that had the holograms Mm -hmm. that made it look like any other ship. So you could theoretically retcon Minefield into saying they were using that same technology back then. Literary Treks. We have a long tradition here on Literary Treks of taking things seriously and having a good time while doing that. Tonight... Well, we were going to take it seriously, but then the comics wouldn't let us. The 602 Club. Yeah, you know, I I had a similar experience where, you know, I was talking to a a guy, the new movie's coming out, obviously, and I'm like, have you seen the the first one? And he's like, no, I haven't. And I'm like, okay, well, let me bring it to you so you you can take a look. And he watched it, and he came back the next day, and he's like, oh, yeah, that movie was really good. And that's what else is happening on Trek.fm. You can listen to every show on the network at Trek.fm with links for iTunes, streaming services, and a direct download link. This week of Earl Grey is brought to you by Audible.com. This is a great way for you to read all of the books you want to read but never have time for. Audible is always expanding with over 150,000 titles to choose from. There are classics, current bestsellers, and famous Star Trek books like Prime Directive and Federation. Audible has something for everyone. Now, as a Trek FM listener, you can get a free audiobook of your choice along with a 30-day trial to try out Audible yourself. So give it a try today. Catch up on all those classic Star Trek books you've yet to read. 
To support Trek FM, visit audibletrial.com slash trekfm and sign up today. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash trekfm. Thank you, Audible, for supporting Earl Grey and Trek FM. If you are a weekly listener and would like to directly help Earl Grey, please consider becoming a patron of Trek FM. At patreon.com slash trekfm, you can choose a pledge level and receive rewards for becoming a Trek FM patron. You'll be inside the Observation Lounge of our network, able to participate in our monthly patron roundtable podcasts, and supporting the production of all of our great content. We would like to take this moment to thank our current patron associate producers, Stephen Boyd and Ron Sarna. Thank you for supporting Earl Grey. Connect with other Trek FM listeners on our Facebook discussion group called The Babel Conference, found through the Facebook search field, or like the facebook.com slash trekfm page for show updates and announcements. The network is also on Twitter, at Trek FM. Well, guys, as of this airing, we are about a week away from Star Trek Las Vegas. And I know you guys have set up your shuttlecraft plans. You're ready to head to the spaceport. I'm ready to use an old Earth vehicle called a car and uh, make my way that way. But uh, I'm really looking forward to meeting you guys next week. We're looking forward to doing a bunch of fun Trek FM things and podcasting together in the same room. I know it's a novel approach, but uh, are you guys, are you guys excited? I, Daniel, your first con. Listen, uh, we talked to Amy. She's, she, I, she's prepared me as well as I think I'm prepared uh, that I can be prepared. So I'm, I'm ready for it. Absolutely. Awesome. And Philip, I mean, it's, it's, it's just going to be so great. Oh yeah. No, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, uh, I am going to turn off my internal chronometer and never sleep. That's pretty much my plan. So isn't it, isn't Vegas the city that never sleeps? That's true. No, that's that's New York. No, no I think it's the city no. that never sobers Sorry. up. Oh. I think that's actually- <laughs> oh, I'm okay with that. Okay what with happens that. in Vegas hap- only stays in Vegas because of a temporal causality loop. Is that, <laughs> is that it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so awesome. Well, we hope to see some of you listeners there. If if so, come and find us. We'd love to hang out, and we will be podcasting, tweeting, streaming, having a ton of fun there. Uh, so check out trek.fm for our schedules, things we're participating in, things we're uh, excited to see. And But if you want to follow us and our exploits as we tweet about our time in Vegas and just Star Trek in general, where could someone listen to you, Philip? Um, well, they can listen to me here um, or in person if they're in Vegas. But if they uh, want to follow me on the interwebs, they can find me on Twitter. My hander, it, handle is NC Public Servant. That's NC for North Carolina. And if someone wanted to find out what's it like to be at a Star Trek convention for the first time, Daniel, where could they talk to you? They can talk to me on Twitter. Uh, my handle there is First Time Conventioner. Oh, wait, no, that's, that's not true. That's a long uh, title. Are you going to have any word, words no, to no, say no, anything con. in that? <laughs> First time con. That would be better. Oh, oh, it could, and it could be con. Oh, with a K. Um, you know, you know. Uh, no, but they, they uh, one up, Dan. Number one, as in the first time at a con, uh, not the word. But even though the word could, could work just as well for, for first. But, but don't it put would, it in it there. It would, yeah. Because that wouldn't, that wouldn't. No, work. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Well, if someone wanted to talk to me, they could find me at Dr. Sci-Fi, D-R-S-C-I-F-I on Twitter. And again, just check out Trek.fm for any news on what we're doing at Star Trek Las Vegas. We're not just Earl Grey, but many hosts from Woman at Warp, uh, Warp 5, uh, to The Journey. There's, there's going to be a lot of us there. So we're really looking forward to it. And we thank you again for listening to us talk about Timescape. Live long and prosper. Thank you, Sarah. Endgame. Fire. Fire.